Edge of Radio. On this episode, Missy and I are talking about releasing guilt. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Everyone to another episode of On Finding Peace. This is the podcast where Missy and I talk about uh, daily practical tips that you can use to find your inner peace. And today we're going to be talking about releasing our guilt. So for those of you on the video version, we can see that Missy has a wonderful background behind her. Um, so how's it going? Yeah, I mean, I was trying to feel tropical today. I'm stuck inside the house. I'm in the AC, but, you know, like this beach scene was just calling to me. So I thought, you know what? I'll play with it. Have some fun and and imagine that we're doing this while I'm sitting at a beach house. (laughs) I I like it because uh, this is the first time I've seen an animated background. Yeah, I've just seen the still picture. So it's, uh, it's it's a nice feature. Yeah. And, you know, I know this is really weird, but I'm on Zoom a lot. And so like when your head is not um, fitting with this, the framework, you know, you can't kind of get your head cut off or whatever. Yep. So this this is actually very fitting. I'm happy about it. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks quite realistic, actually. Yeah. I, I it wouldn't have surprised me if you were on some, you know, screened in porch or something, you yeah. know, and yeah. just enjoying the tropics. Yeah, and so I hear you have a little one in the background, so that should be uh, yep. fun to hear her, you know, while Grandkid we're day, the so that's Yeah, awesome. so that's always a good thing, so. Yeah. Um, always looking bit forward of, to that. Bring some childlike energy to our, our podcast today. Yes, Remind us exactly. all what, we're, what we enjoy in life. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because my background, as nice as it is, is not your tropical. Yeah, nice background. it's still really cool. I mean, you're right on the water always. So like I can see it in the reflection a little bit. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 I, I'm to turn around and show the water. I'm too far away from the outlet. So I unfortunately can't do that. But yeah, enjoy the <laughs> reflection. I will enjoy, enjoy the reflection. <laughs> So um, when we brought up the subject about releasing guilt, you had you you had mentioned that um, you you were working with someone who was kind of experiencing this. So I was just wondering, not that I want you to, you know, of course, bring their things. But, you know, what's the context there? So actually, I deal with this a lot, you know, with people who've gone through uh, some trauma issues. Uh, But this individual uh, it's about actions that they took mm-hmm. and um, looks like may have a consequence to uh, as far as legal. So um, they're dealing with, you know, trying to change who they were to become, you know, someone who isn't involved in those activities anymore. But on top of that, uh, is feeling a lot of um, guilt and shame and, uh, you know, remorse and uh, regret right. and is really struggling uh, with that part, uh, really focused on uh, the past and, and what was going on. Right. The night. Well, we have a, we have a, um, you know, in, in, in what I practice, there's four pillars on your way to releasing the guilt. So your first is the guilt, is the indication that there is guilt. Um, And then we have that guilt inside of us and we like literally push it out of us because we don't want it and we project it onto somebody else. And so in that projection, they mirror us. They mirror to us that there's healing that needs to be done on that guilt, whether it's, you know, they're doing the same thing that, that we need to heal or, um, you know, or they're just showing us ourselves. And then um, the other thing is uh, the final is really that forgiveness. So where we're working mm-hmm. towards being able to forgive the things that, you know, 
that we perceive that we did that we need to hold that that guilt for um you know this this we've talked about things like this many many times you know the healthy the unhealthy and just being able to remain neutral um because you could go through the same thing that i went through chris and you could have a totally different perspective on it and yep. um i think that that's important for us to instead of staying closed on this one focused um, thought process about whatever it is, whatever the circumstances that we open ourselves up to, maybe there's a different way of looking at things. Um, <clears throat> and in that you can likely find the neutrality of it to help you get to the part where you're forgiving and forgiveness, not like you did something wrong and you need to be relinquished of that sin, but, but, the giving forth because that's what the word actually stands for is just giving it forth and being like, look, mm -hmm. this is going to work it out. God, whoever you want to call it is going to work it out. So now I see it. I don't want to do it anymore because I don't like it. Doesn't make me feel good. And now if I give it forth, then it will all be handled and I can become the person inside that needs to be healed to not have these things happen again. Yeah. And that's, I think, one of those tough moments because, and I know for this client in particular and for previous ones I've had, but one of the things that really makes it difficult is it's so easy for us to live in the past. Hmm. It, it's easy and easy is probably the wrong word to say because it's uh, much more damaging and all the negative feelings associated with it. But to move beyond that past is really going to take some difficult emotional work. So in that sense, it's easy for us just to run back into the past and then start playing through our heads of the, you know, if I didn't do this, if I would have done this different, you know, I shouldn't have acted in this way, you know, all of those things. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things working with this particular client is, is to get past all of those thoughts because when we're dealing with something from the past, we can't change it. So it's really futile to be saying, well, you know, I should have done this different. What if I didn't do this? You know, then this wouldn't have happened. Yeah. And, um, and then whether all that say, is true, we can't change it. Tony Robbins says you could, you could shit all over yourself. Right. You know, and, yeah. and that's where that guilt and shame comes from. Um, but it's also conditioning. It's like, you know, going to the gym, we condition our bodies, right? If I were to only work out my left muscle, man, that arm would look good. And this one might look, my right arm would look really puny, but we conditioned ourselves to, to be martyrs, right? We condition mm -hmm. ourselves to, well, I did that. It was bad and wrong. I put judgment on myself. Um, I put judgment on other people. And in order for me to heal, I actually have to go through that walk. I feel like that that's necessary. Um, but you can condition yourself the other way. And it really does just take the awareness of what's going on up here mentally to be like, wait, why did I, why am I thinking negative things about myself? Like, because I'm that type of person and I know, you know, probably 99% of our clients or our, our listeners are that way where they go like, I am so nice to everybody else. I hold doors. I do kind things. I give, I love, mm -hmm. you know, but when they look in the mirror, whether it's they're tearing down their physical body, they're mentally beating themselves up for the wrongs that they've held or, or think that they've done, um, that's the conditioning that, that you have to decondition. You have to, un, it's, it's atonement, right? You have to atone yep. for that behavior, which I feel like um, ancestral uh, vibes come into this, you know, like our parents were taught by their parents were taught by their parents who didn't know any better. They didn't know any mm -hmm. better, but we now know better. So now it's like, okay, well, you can't pretend that you don't know because you know, and if you don't know, I'm telling you, don't do that anymore. You don't need to, you know, but <laughs> once you start to think of those things and you, you just recognize it as, oh, okay. I see that I'm doing that. I don't want to do that. So I'll believe something different or how can I see this differently rather than holding on to that, um, you know, bad, wrong judgment part of, of the way that we think. And definitely it is the 
exercise and the repetitive nature of over and over. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I try to remind all of my clients is that when we talk about the cognitive changes and even behavioral, but more so, you know, the way that they're feeling, the way that they're thinking, we all want things done now. Yeah. So, you know, they, they take some of the techniques that I give them and they apply it and then it didn't work the first time. And it's like, well, you know, that didn't work. Yeah. Where, you know, Definitely I have to remind them, but yeah, you know, you, you've been going how many years with this particular feeling yeah. or how yeah. many years of these thought patterns, you know, a couple of times in doing something new is not, it, yeah. it is that repetitive that every time a certain thought pops in, we need to replace it. Right. You know, a, a certain desire pops in if we're talking addictions, you know, how do you replace that desire with something else? Right. But it's got to be that repetitive nature of it so that over time it becomes your norm. But it's going to take time. Yeah. And you're worth it. Like, you know, like mm -hmm. you, you came in here into this world to have these experiences. You have to love the darkness just as much as you love the light. That's the way that I see it. And like, as I was evolving, let's say that as I was evolving, I hated like with the passion, I couldn't stand emotions. I couldn't stand the negative. I couldn't stand the darkness. And now mm. that I've understood why I went through where I, where I had to go and what I had to do. Um, I love it. I love that it all fell into place. I love that it, it taught me the information that I needed to know to heal myself. I love that I have the awareness that even now it still pops up, but then I go like, Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Yeah. I don't think that anymore, you know, because I did have to go through those practices and I know I've mentioned it before and I know a lot of people find it silly, but you know, affirmations really did help me because mm -hmm. I was just thinking all of the negative. And even when I started to do affirmations, I thought this is retarded. This is, I don't <laughs> believe it. I feel so fake. I feel phony. And then as it was going, I started to embody those words. I started to believe those I am statements. And it's really brought me a far, um, I feel like very far along the journey of, of loving myself, of understanding that mental, um, mentally beating yourself up is, is just unhealthy. Yeah, no, very much so. And I, I think one of the things that ruined for many people those uh um talking about all those good attributes of, of yourself and all the saturday night live skit of years ago uh -huh. uh, <laughs> that that's probably what ruined it all for uh people but yeah um but well, there there is a lot of it's fun to make fun don't get me wrong i oh, yeah. i make fun of me by doing it but i'm like you know i it worked so well, is, if, as long as it works for me, you can laugh at me yeah. all you want and go for it. I mean, but at the same time, you know, try it. It might work for you. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, it's okay. Because, you know, the same people who then, you know, mock that, I will bet you're doing that in, in the negative. You know, instead of having affirmations that, you know, yeah. sure, you can mock that and say that's funny, that's ridiculous, that's whatever. Right. But if you really think it through, what are you on a daily basis telling yourself about you? Yeah. And it's usually all these negative things. And for some reason, we can say, well, that's all fine, you know, that because that's true, because. But that's the same thing, just in the negative. So if that is working in the negative, then why would the positive not be working? Well, here's the thing. I don't know if, you know, like I know you're a parent, I'm a parent. And, and I'm just going to use this kind of as an example, as a new mother, I was, you know, I felt, you know, like on top of the world, you know, good kids always, you know, but I started to domesticate them so that I started to make them, you know, think that this was bad. This was wrong. This was good. This, you know, those kind of things, because they're, we're worried about their protection. We're worried about, you know, making sure that they're safe. And that's kind of where it starts for all of us, I feel like. And, you know, I can remember when I started to learn a difference in that, I'm like, oh my God, I started to beat myself up. Like, oh my gosh, I've been such an awful parent all these years. Like, 
you know, let them cl- climb, guide them, of course, make sure you're there to catch them if they fall, if you mm-hmm. feel nervous, but at the same time, like let them be themselves, let them flourish that way. And uh, the guilt that I felt because I couldn't change it, similar to what you said about your client, I couldn't change that. And mm-hmm. then I was like, well, what am I going to do right now? Like right now is the only thing that I can do. And I'm like, well, this is not helping the situation. Beating yourself up and feeling bad and, and making yourself a martyr is not helping the situation. It You can only do what you can do right now in this moment. Right now, you just accept yourself for where you're at. And, and the past doesn't really matter at that point. Like the future doesn't yep. matter, right? Um I, there, there's an author that says, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's in a course in miracles. And they say, um, an unhealed mind or an unhealed mind, a healed mind doesn't plan. Sorry. An unhealed mind plans. And that to me means right here in this moment, I've got no plans for this moment, except for, oh, wait, you know what? I'm thirsty. I'm going to drink some water or you know what Chris and I are going to have a great conversation this is my moment if I'm worried mm-hmm. about where I'm going what am I doing later what time I have to be where then I'm not living in the moment and that's not helping me that's causing anxiety for my future if I'm fearing what I did in the past and I'm worrying about it and I'm making myself a martyr then I'm just going to bring up the past to relive in the future until that gets healed so that's how you have peace That's how you become, you know, uh, that's what this podcast is about, right? That's how you become peaceful. Yep. And, and that's all the mindfulness stuff that I, and you, you know, try to get out to all of our clients that it's all about what's happening in the moment. And it's not in some naive Pollyanna, you know, way that, you know, all, all the moments are, wonderful because sometimes living in the moment is ugly. Sometimes living in the moment is rough. Um, But it's all about how do I feel what I'm feeling here in this moment? Mm. But for me, it's then all about what is that next action? Yeah. You know, so is this a feeling that I'm having after I'm feeling it? Is this something that's healthy for me or not so healthy for me right now. Right. So what are the action steps that I need to do to change that? And, you know, it's like a, a, another current client of mine just had this week and they were feeling very angry uh, about something. And their uh, thought to me was, well, I'm feeling angry, but I shouldn't be feeling angry right it's like well why shouldn't you be feeling angry Uh, (laughs) well that's a negative emotion right i'm like no if in this moment you are feeling angry then feel angry feel that emotion yeah but what are you going to do about that emotion you know what's your next step what's your action based on this so we, yeah, we call that in, experience your experience, right? In the ways yeah. of mastery, that's called experiencing your experience. But the action afterward, where are you coming from with that action? Is it an inspired action? Is it a spiritually, you know, um, uh, left end of the pole action? Or is it an egoic? I have to protect my pride. I have to look good. Mm-hmm. You know, I have to be right. Is it is it that way? So the inspired action is what I would ha- hope that people aim, aim for. And the triggering of whatever made them angry, again, that's the guilt, right? That's them projecting yep. it. That's them mirroring it. And then now it's coming back to them to show them that they have healing that needs to be done to give it forth. Um, the other thing when you were talking about the, you know, like we all have good, bad moments, right? That's the law Mm -hmm. of rhythm. That's the day follows night, you know, that that's the seasons following each other. We have that in our lives. We have the, the pendulum swinging from high to low, good to bad. Right. And the way that you can not be in the pendulum right? Or be part of the pendulum as you're swinging. You're like, gosh, I feel like a yo-yo. I'm, I'm happy today. I'm sad tomorrow, you know, um, is to just be an observer, right? Be an observer of what's going on in your life so that you can be aware of what needs to be forgiven. You can be aware of what needs healing. Um, 
I did that for abundance in my life. And, you know, I know this is a subject who doesn't want abundance. Everybody, like, as soon as we think abundance, we think money, right? And I caught myself saying to my children so many times, we can't afford that. We can't afford that. No, I'm broke. I don't have any money. And words mean things. We know that. Yep. And so as I observed myself saying it, I'm like, it would be in the moment, uh, vomiting out of my mouth. And I'd be like, oh, why did I say that? But it was showing me that I had a lack mentality that needed healing. And so to, to gain my power back from that, instead of, you know, giving the power to the lack, I would actually say, no, I'm, I'm not going to buy that right now. I'm choosing not to buy that right now. And that gave me like the, oh, okay, well, I can if I want to, you know, mm -hmm. like I gave me the, the weight of feeling abundant, but it didn't make me have to feel the lack, if that makes any sense. So hopefully yep. that's helpful for everybody who's, you know, kind of, you know, walking that, that's that slippery slope. <laughs> yeah, no, most definitely, you know, because it really is finding rhythm in life and, and life is all about rhythm yeah. and cycles and you know what's going on so it's it's important for us to find what is our natural rhythm in life yeah um and then live by that rhythm you know and and change what we can change and what's in our ability to change and what we can we accept it and just live within that rhythm yeah um you know it, it's like the the person who was saying, you know, I, I shouldn't feel this way. You know, they're like, so how do I feel? It's like, well, you feel what you feel. You know, it's like, well, if I keep feeling this way, it's just going to be perpetuated. Hmm. But again, for me, it, it's what you do with it is what's going to perpetuate it or not. Yeah. You know, if that anger pops up, what you do with that anger. So if you want to dwell in that anger then yes, you are going to perpetuate that anger. And, but if that anger pops up and you acknowledge it, you accept it, you live it, but then do healthy things to move forth from it. Right. You're not encouraging it at all. Yeah. And you know what? Be grateful for it all. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, literally you were just sitting there talking, Chris, and I like had this huge wave of emotion come over to me to where I was like, oh my gosh, please don't start crying right this second, <laughs> but, but not in a bad way, because I'm so grateful for conversations like this. I'm so grateful for, you know, uh, for our listeners. I'm so grateful for the experiences that I have because they're all information. And if you just can look at each bit of everything that happens in your circumstances, in your experience as information and not judge it as good or bad information. Mm -hmm. Just understand that it's information for you to help heal yourself, to bring you to a higher level of peace. And it, it will, it will make you grateful and be like, you know, you run into that person who's just cut you off on the road and you're like, Oh, I must be driving <laughs> like a wild man. That's good information. Thank you. You know, or, you know, um, somebody is kind to you and they hold the door open. That's also information. That means you're a kind person. It's being returned to you. That's again, the law of rhythm. That's karma. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know those words, right. But, um, you know, it, it helps you to be gentler on yourself. Yep. It really does. It helps you to not be like, you know, um, in a negative mindset when you just realize that everything is information. And, and there's actually a phrase, again, I'm going to mention the Course in Miracles that says all things are the voice or are the echoes for the voice of God. And so, you know, whether God is universe or, or whatever you believe it is mm -hmm. or it isn't, I don't mean it religiously, but I do mean it as in like, that's what we're all here experiencing. That's how we're not separate people. You know, we're, we're separate bodies, but you know, to me, the oneness, and if we can collectively help heal when I heal, you're healing. And yep. if I don't see you as sick, then I don't see you as separate from me. You know, it's just it's just amazing when you can start to dive in on that, that, uh, quantum field of, of how we're all interact, interactive with each other and, and connected. Yeah, no, uh, most definitely, you know, and, and again, it, it's about allowing yourself to feel what you feel. 
Yeah. You know, the, this original client we were talking about with all of the guilt and, and the regrets and, you know, one of the things that they had said to me was, you know, well, in times that, you know, there's some happy things going on, I, I don't feel I can allow myself to be happy mm. because of what I've done in the past. Right. And that I, I get that thought pattern. Right. But we have to break through that and to say if, if we're going to live the moment, we live the moment. And if something is happening where you can be happy and celebrate and, you know, you do that because that's yeah. what's happening in the moment. To stop yourself from doing that, you're living in the past. Yeah. And it's all about living in the present moment. And and so me, like I, I love catharsis, whether it's beating the hell out of the punching bag and, and <laughs> falling into a, you know, a, a pile of exhausted tears or, or just like being with my emotions and letting that same, you know, those same tears fall, that catharsis is so healing. It's like, okay, all right, finally letting it out. However, it's going to come out. It's just going to appear and like, feel it, get it over with, and then be like, okay, what's next? You know, like, you know, or as I might say to, you know, some of my girlfriends, okay, now put your good big girl panties on and, you know, mm -hmm. just keep going. And, but you have to take those moments. Like you really do have to take those moments and embrace them. Because again, I go back to like your inner child, the things that, you know, maybe mom and dad didn't see you and you felt, you know, you felt unloved or, or whatever. That's what needs to be seen. Like that's what is calling for yep. you at that moment. And you're ignoring it just the same as, you know, what you were, what you experienced. So you're repeating it again. And um, so I just, uh, I just encourage people to just like, let yourself fall, fall apart and in whatever moment that it, it is, you know, and maybe mm -hmm. that's a good listener chat. you know, what you were, what you experienced. So you're repeating it again. And, um, so I just, uh, I just encourage people to just like, let yourself fall, fall apart and in, in whatever moment that it, it is, you know, and maybe mm -hmm. that's a good listener challenge. Like if you're having a bad day, have yeah. a bad day, it's okay. Or have a bad moment and then make a new moment. So no, I think that would be a great listener challenge to have people share those moments with us. Yeah. So what, what is your moment and whether that's, I hate to use good or bad, but you know, for lack well, of like, a better word, like me, I just like was overwhelmed with gratitude. Like that was like, wow, this is amazing. This is so joyful. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that I have had times where I've cried for hours straight and then was like, okay, I'm done. That was it. That's all I needed. I just <laughs> needed to, you know, feel that raw emotion and let it yep. be there you know, um, instead of ignoring it. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I think that that would be a great challenge is yes. Yeah, send in, what is your moment? How, how are you living and staying in that moment and not allowing yourself the, the future or the past, just, just live your moment. Yeah. I actually, my 11 year old, he's a very emotional child. And, um, I mean, it's just like, it's heart wrenching when this child has, a, has an off day, but you know, he's got it so much inside of him. Sometimes I've told him like, go scream in the pillow, go scream in the pillow because like that, you know, it's helping that energy move. It's getting it out of there. Mm -hmm. And, and so, but he always walks away feeling better. Like, okay, thanks. Thanks for letting me, you know, just be however I'm being instead of like, suck it up, buttercup, you know, like, I don't, you know, exactly. we just like, let it happen. And, and, um, and he feels better about it and he embraces who he is by doing those kind of things, you know? Sounds good. Yeah. So I like it. a pillow if you guys need to, <laughs> hey, you know, it, it's, uh, the, this other client who was talking about the anger, uh, yeah. they had mentioned that when they were feeling it, a friend of theirs said, you know, I got a bunch of uh, bushes that need trimming and, they went at it and trimmed it and they said they felt so much better yeah. but this was the interesting piece because i'm thinking to myself well of course you did you know you you were getting out 
you know, an action, getting out the anger, putting a lot of good endorphins in your mind, all this good stuff. But for this person, they said, but you know, the great thing was it wasn't destruction. Yeah. Because when I looked back, when I was done, I created something of beauty mm. and I could see on the ground, all the, you know, things that I cut. And what that said to me was, look what I did. Yeah. So I could see that I actually did something, but the creation was beauty and it wasn't destruction. My yeah. anger didn't destroy something. That's awesome. That is. I, I had never thought of it that way. I, I thought that was so insightful. Yeah. And we, women, we do something very similar when, when we need to like get rid of things, we actually go cut our hair a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, we'll just go chop it all off and start fresh, you know, but it's mm-hmm. same kind of thing. Like, okay, I need something new here. I need to be creative. And, you know, that's a great way of, of sharing. Like, you know, we don't want anybody to be destructive just because you're feeling these feelings, go create something. I mean, yep. you know, and, and that, that will help you tremendously as well. Even if it's, you know, you know, a portrait of what you're feeling on the inside could be mm-hmm. extremely raw and real and beautiful at the exact same time. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for everything, Chris. So, I mean, again, like the gratitude I have for these kind of conversations with us and, uh, you know, uh, the laughter that we get to share. And I hope that our listeners feel the same way and enjoy, enjoy what we put out. Definitely. I I look forward to uh, these times and uh, for the listeners, you know, please like, and share, um, you know, this, to uh, let your friends get to experience our moments together yeah. and, uh, we'll see you at the next time. 